<laughs> Hang on a minute. Okay. Should probably rehearse this a little better. Um, okay, the, po the point I was trying to make with this game is fairly straightforward, really. Um, if you were to imagine that that was part of a TV show, um, you've probably clocked onto this already, but the whole point at the beginning was that you would um, get involved with the game somehow, whatever the game might be, and that your involvement would be exposed to people who weren't playing the game or even watching the show via Twitter, hence the Twitter thing, and that they would potentially get involved with the show when they saw how good it was and that you were enjoying it. Um, and at various points during the show, it would sort of interact with you and check with you how you're doing, and you could feel part of it. And at the end, what we've got is a result, which then, again, is exposed uh, beyond um, the people who are watching it and increase the reach and the lifetime of the show. Thank you. Um, yeah, absolutely. It is possible. It's been helped greatly by um, the emergence of cloud computing, um, which makes it much cheaper to deploy 200 instances of our platform um, just in case we need them. So in terms of scale, the, the big problem was always the investment that a broadcaster would have to make in potentially unused capacity, but cloud computing makes it feasible financially. Technically, it, it is doable. It's quite hard. You have to test it a lot. Um, but that's what we did with Million Pound Drop with 100,000 users, and it, it worked quite fine, quite okay. So, um, yeah, you aggregate all of the results together. I mean, the, 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 it's a creative challenge as much as a technical one. Um, you need to figure out how to pick those interesting stats at the right time and ha how to have the person in the gallery communicating with the producer and then feeding that back into the presenter's earpiece. That's as much of a challenge as, as the rest of it. But oh, yes, is the answer. Any other questions for Tom? Yes, Nicholas. Uh, thank you. Um, looking at media and content businesses, I tend to focus on the challenges of acquiring customers, retaining customers, and monetizing them. Army or sub is my kind of phrase. For your second screen strategy, do you think it's more about audiences? Is it more about retention and engagement, or is it more about making money? And what sort of would work best? Um, to date. Most of the projects have been about, I mean, we're in a trial and error market right now with this stuff, and it's about trying stuff out and seeing what sticks. And so monetization has not been on the list of, of top priorities, but we're going through a transition now where it is, especially um, ITV, for instance, it's an ad-funded company. Of course, it's looking at monetizing that audience over the long term. Um, in terms of loyalty, um, I think this stuff has great potential to... Um, increased loyalty, especially when we talk, start talking about um, giving people awards and achievements over the multiple episodes of a show, then you know, ob obviously we're increasing their propensity to come back again. So that, I mean, there's potential for all of those things, I think, and there isn't one broadcaster or one producer focused on any one of them. It's certainly a question that comes up time and time again because, of course, we're acutely aware. You know, we all play those games as well. Um, I think I think the challenge for us is 
how to, you, how to take the 100,000 people off the back of the million pound drop, which by you know, any count is a lot of people to get together at one time, how to take those and introduce them to something which is very similar, which is then asynchronous, which you can play 24 seven. Um, to date, it's so focused on the TV show that the money doesn't go around for all of those things at once. But now that we've proved that we can get a certain volume of people, um, the next step is exactly that. And I think it's about creating something which has live moments, which are optional, um, and that there's a 24-7 sort of game wrapped into it. So, yeah, I, I, I agree. I think that's a, a big part of the future. Um, I'm wondering why so little has changed. I, I've been going to interactive things for so many years now. I think I went to virtual Hollywood about 10 years ago where people were talking about dual screen solutions and people did like in, uh, interactive CSI and some really interesting stuff going on in Germany with kids' programs, which are kind of quite interactive. Um, and I just wonder why it's, it, 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 it's taken so long. You might, you might brief working life in television, I did find um, a, such a cultural clash between anyone to do with IT was basically, we're doing engineering, you've got to know six months be before how something's going to be a TV producer saying, but the day before it goes live, I want to turn everything green. Um, and it's just complete divide. And I, and I wonder, is that the reason why we just haven't really progressed? That's certainly my early experience in this business as well, is exactly that. Um, and, and so you, you, you can build up quite a negative culture between the two sides, as it were. But I think what we've tried to do is sort of hold our peace a little bit and, um, and stay friends with TV, <laughs> basically. <laughs> and I think the only, the only way that this is going to work is when people like me and my team sit down on equal terms with the development producers of a new show and we work it out together. And that's to some extent what we did with Endemol with this. It's their show 100% and we just came in. But we came in before they'd nailed the format. That makes a big difference. But in future, we're, we're now sitting down uh, off the back of that and some other things. We're now sitting down with those people and figuring it out from scratch. And I think that's, that's why it will change. But there's the, what's changed in the last year is the desire for people like that, for de development producers at big studios to actually get involved with people like us. Um, it's changed in the last 12 months. When making friends with those, those, those people, those strange people, um, is stickiness a big word? It's stickiness. Is retention um, is what, what the, I mean, they are particularly what is true, and they're the key that they want to win. What's the, what's the phrase that they use? Um, no, I, I think those people are focused on making a great experience, by and large, making the show better because it involves its audience. I think those are very strong arguments, maybe for a commissioner or maybe for somebody strategic at a broadcaster. So we, we tend to try and feed those arguments in around the side, if you like, and, and, and quote stats and quote benefits that um, through press become accepted norms. Um, and then the creative people are, are then um, left to sort of focus on the experience itself. I don't think you'll find a development producer that is really thinking about um, the percentage loyalty rate Necessarily. I mean, they, they do, they do, that's a generalization, but, but that's not what you're talking about in the room.